At GCSE, you know that there are a lot of index rules. In this video, we're going to look at these rules and discover why they are the way they are. Because if you understand how they operate, the applications become way easier and your GCSEs will always become easier, Mike. So I'm going to prove these first five rules and then in the next video, I'm going to prove a few more of them for you. Now, what's the first rule? If you multiply two numbers with the same base, you add the powers. So let's recap here. If you have a number like this with a power, this is known as the base, and this is known as the index, or the SME, or the exponent, depending on where you are. So when I say I'm multiplying two numbers with the same base, I'm talking about this number. They always have to be the same. Now, why is it that when we multiply, we have to add the powers? Well, we have to remind ourselves, what do we even mean by powers? Power just means repeated multiplication. So when we took a look at rule one, let's look at an example. So say I want to do, let's take an actual example of a base. So two cubed times two to the power of four. So you guys should know that we are adding the powers, right? Three plus four will be seven, but why is that? Well, two cubed means we're taking the number two and we are multiplying it by itself three times. Now what's two to the power of four? So when we're doing a big multiply here, two to the power of four means we're doing two multiplied by itself four times. Now how does this simplify? Well, you can easily represent this as a single power because you're taking two and you're multiplying it by itself seven times here. So you're counting the three and the four here. So you're doing three plus four, which is seven. And this is why when we're multiplying numbers with the same base, we're basically just counting the number of times we are multiplying a number by itself, okay? So that's rule one. I'm just going to erase this. Let's take a look at rule two. Rule two, dividing two numbers with the same base. We subtract the powers. I think the best way to look at rule two is instead of looking at it as a division symbol, let's look at it in terms of fractions. That's actually where the divide symbol comes from. That line is a fraction. You have something on the top, something on the bottom. So let's take a look at two to the power of six divided by two to the power of four. We're dividing two numbers with the same base. Okay, so we're doing two to the power of six divided by two to the power of four. Now we should know what the answer is gonna be. We're gonna do six minus four, which is two. Okay, two to the power of six means we're taking the number two and we're multiplying it by itself six times. So four, five, six divided by Two to the power of four, which is one, two, three, four. Now here, if you read, you can see you're doing two divided by two, two divided by two, two divided by two, etc. What happens when you take two divided by two? It's one. This is known as cancellations. So instead of saying two divided by two, etc., we just put a line through them and say, okay, two divided by two is one. 2 divided by 2 is 1. How many times can we do this? We can do it 4 times. What are we left with? 2 times 2, which is 2 squared, which is the subtraction of these two values. Okay, so the way this simplifies is you're basically looking at the lowest power. And you can see that the lowest power will always cancel with the same amount from the largest power. Okay. So this is why when we divide numbers with the same base, we subtract the powers. Let's take a look at number three, where when we take a number raised to a power, then we raise that whole thing to another power, we multiply the powers. Okay, so rule three, when you take a number raised to a power, and we raise this whole thing to a new power, we multiply the powers. It will become two to the power of two times three, 
which is 2 to the power 6. Okay, why is that? We're taking 2 squared and we are cubing it. Cubing means we're going to multiply this by itself 3 times. So I'm going to write 2 squared 3 times and I'm going to multiply them. That's cubing it, right? And here we can now use our rule one. Rule one is saying we now need to add all of these powers. Okay, so we're taking a number raised to a power, but we're multiplying these three numbers with the same base. So we're adding the powers, it'll become two. So our two plus two plus two. But here you have a repetition of addition. Repetition of addition can be represented with multiplication. So instead of saying two plus two plus two, that is the same as doing two multiplied by itself three times, which is two to the power of six, okay? So that, this rule three, is just repeated rule one. And this is why we multiply those numbers. Not to get confused though, I think this is really important, is rule three, if the bracket is not there, it does not apply anymore. So, for example, if I do the exact same question, but without the bracket, for example, I had 2 to the power of 2, then I had a bracket cubed, right? Imagine I have it like this. Let's quickly take a look at the difference here. This one, which we just looked at, is saying, look, you're taking the number 2, you're squaring it, then this whole thing, we're going to cube it. This is rule 3. This is not. This is saying you have the number 2, which is being squared, but it's not actually being squared. This 2 is being raised to the power of 2 cubed. So you actually have to evaluate this first. This, 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. That's 2 to the power of 8. They're different. So with a bracket, you're multiplying. If there's no bracket, you're raising to whatever this power is, you need to evaluate that first. Now let's take a look at rule four. When you raise any number to the power of zero, you get one, provided the base number is not zero. Okay, rule four. Anything to the power of zero is one. Take a look at this. We all know two squared is four, right? We know two to the power of one is two. How can I go from two squared to just two to the power of one? Well, using rule two, we can do a division. I can divide by 2 to the power of 1, because then when you divide, you're subtracting the powers. 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Yeah? Okay, how am I then going to get 2 to the power of 0? Well, I'm going to divide by 2 again. Specifically, 2 to the power of 1, because then 1 minus 1 is 0. And then, when you divide by 2 here, 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now, this is obviously specific to 2 to the power of. You might be wondering, well, how come x cannot be 0? Well, what's going to end up happening here on any step, really, is that you're going to be dividing by 0, which is not allowed. Yeah, if we were to forget about this, you could say uh, it would look like this. You would have 0 to the power of 1 is just 0. But then to get 0 to the power of 0, you're going to have to divide by 0, which is not possible. Yeah? This is another thing that we would look at in terms of limits, it's known as an indeterminate form. You don't need to know that at GCSE. But essentially, you could think of it as the base number can never be zero because you'd be dividing by zero. And in fact, we can actually prove rule five in the exact same way. I just need to go once more, okay? So if I divide by two to the power of one again, zero take away one, is just minus 1. And then here I'm going to divide by 2. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. And you can see that it has what we call reciprocated the number because this is 2 over 1. Power minus 1 just takes your numerator and denominator and switches them around. So 2 over 1 became 1 over 2. Okay, so just remember power minus 1, it does not multiply this number by negative, it flips it switches the numerator and denominator. And a nice way to remember this is the way I teach my GCSE students at my space is I say flipping like reciprocals 
which is a famous line from J. Cole's Lost Ones. Uh, I recommend you, you listen to the tune, it's an absolute banger. So whenever they see power minus one, they're thinking flipping like reciprocals, a J. Cole tune. So yeah, these are the first five rules, guys. We're now going to apply some of them in the next video in terms of a really difficult question. So if you enjoyed today's video and you want to see more, make sure you're subscribed, like the video, add this to your playlist. I recommend you make a playlist on index rules and I'll see you guys in the next video. Nice.